All right, gamers, today we're going to be playing a game of Smolder. I'm going to do my best to show you how to play this champion. As somebody who is first time a champion, I've watched some videos, though. Watched some other people play them. I, I had a joke prepared. I can't do it if we're invading, though. This is so inconvenient. Come on, guys. This is not the game to be invading. Oh, God, I have to try and help here. Wait, what the? Oh, okay. I found the. I, I don't know how. I watched like three different videos of people playing Smolder. I thought this was a skill shot. I actually thought this was a skill shot. How did I miss that? Okay, lesson learned. Uh, okay, I gotta do my joke real fast. All right. Uh, listen to this. One sec. I'm Smolder. Did you hear? Did you hear that? You get it? Because, so the joke is that in that breakdown, he was supposed to say, "I'm smoldering," but I like paused it, so he said, "I'm smolder," and I I am playing the League of Legends champion smolder. That is the joke. You should be laughing by now. I don't know what to tell you, man. That joke is hilarious. But anyway, uh, yeah, we're gonna be playing smolder. I'm gonna be running fleet footwork, overheal. Oh my god, this is my first time playing quick play, and I can really tell sports in this mode are not it. What the hell? Uh, Legend Bloodline, Coup de Gras, Absolute Focus, Gathering Storm, oh, not bad though, uh, actually I'm not too sure about the Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm, it seems like he might just perform better with like free boots and cookies just to get some mana early on, um, don't want to run overheal though because it's going to be really overkill when we just rush first item Essence Reaver, what is going on with our team by the way, where's their support? Um, I don't know whether I should level E or W second, actually. I think I'll just level E. I'm not sure his W is actually very strong early on, so we can use E for defensive capabilities. I made sure Hogath is already out of mana. Uh, I need to check whether using, or I would like to check, if Jogath will allow me, uh, whether my Q actually gets, like, extra stacks on cannons, like some other stacking mechanics do. Please don't, please... Okay, I got it. I don't think it gave me extra stacks, so that's good to know. The Cho'Gath play is so weird. Holy crap. But yeah, I decided to try out quick play because pretty much the only way to guarantee you smolder right now. I usually really dislike making videos on new champions just because of it. How hard it is to actually get them between bands and other people, like insta locking them and stuff. But anyway, uh, Smolder is definitely a hyper carry, the absolute definition of a hyper carry. From what I've seen, he is really, really terrible early on. And funnily enough, I think he, he still looked underwhelming from the videos that I saw in the mid to late game. Like, I saw the, the first Smolder game that I saw was like an ADC getting fed on Smolder in a game that lost in 38 minutes. And after th 38 minutes of stacking, and he had a lot of stacks, he was doing a good job stacking. You might think, oh wow, what a huge payoff. It 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 felt okay. It looked okay. Did not feel like it was worth 38 minutes of being useless at all. But uh, I could be wrong. I feel a different about it once I'm actually the one playing him. Should I pop Ghost here? I don't think so. Not unless he lands a Q. Here we go. Lovely. Okay, we'll play Trogath. I don't actually know whether I can, like, auto-attack and use Q during my E. That is also something I probably should have noted. We'll check that at some point soon. You can tell all of my prep time went into that stupid joke, and I had to do it so rushed as well. Is this AoE? Eh, it's pretty good. Uh, wave clear, at least, it seems. Alright, not bad. I'm gonna be basing here and getting Sheen, I think. Unless, does he want to dive? It, it could technically be doable. I think it would actually be... Well, it would be the right call if not for Zillin arriving into lane so early. If we'd crash sooner, it would be a call. But I also, like, generally just wouldn't trust my support to, uh... Follow me up on a call like that, so, yeah. Yeah, definitely actually meant... Uh, I should I should have done uh, tier 1 boots here. But I definitely meant to run Inspiration Secondary. I kind of forgot to switch that to my butt. I'm not sure how good Smolder's AD scaling really is, but we'll see. <clears throat> Might be most of his damage just comes from his passive. I 
Anyway, Fleet seems to be his best. Keystone by far at the moment. Um, could turn out that the data ends up showing something different, but for now it seems like very, very conclusive that Fleet is just absolutely the best. Why? I don't know. Uh, I assume it's something to do with the fact that Q seems to proc it. So maybe that's why, I don't know. Maybe he just needs to sustain in lane. But definitely has a lot better results at the moment than... PTA, Lethal Temple, and Conqueror. Lethal Temple seems to be the worst. He just by like he really seems like he doesn't rely much on attack speed at all. Uh, in fact, it's possible that builds will actually turn out to be really weird on him. And maybe he actually does Ionians or something. I don't know. We'll see. For now, I'm just gonna build him with Berserkers. Okay, that's nice. Okay, nice. Oh. Well, I currently have my uh, overheal stacked up. We should go on somebody here. It's actually focusing Jinx. And I actually get her. Uh, I'm probably gonna wanna focus Zillion now. Perfect. Alright, all right. actually, our early game damage is not bad. Bear in mind, uh, for some weird reason, uh, well, not for some weird reason, but Smolder Q just does apply on hit effects. Ah, damn. So we do a lot of damage by rushing Sheen and just combining that with our Q. I meant to say that as soon as I bought the Sheen, but I got distracted about the boots thing. See, so, yeah, I mean, Essence Reaver Rush seems like that's just going to be completely non-negotiable. I could not really imagine anything else actually being worth it over that. Uh, we could do refillable now. Um, another thing that is a, li a little bit less conclusive just because of lack of sample size on the stats is that overheal seems to be showing a much higher win rate than uh, triumph and presence of mind. I'm a little bit dubious about it because it's not as big a sample size as the fleet thing, so I'm not like as willing to take it at face value. But it is like a really, really big difference. So it feels like it, even if it's a little bit off, it might still probably be the best. Um... I don't exactly know why. I don't know of any particular healing interactions in Smolder's kit that would make him stack it up sooner. Maybe I'm just overlooking something. But it did seem... I, obviously, I did actually have it stacked up uh, during that previous fight, as I mentioned. I'm just going to try and observe like how easily do I seem to be getting it stacked up. Is it just because of fleet or what? Actually, just got stacked up really easily there. Is it is it to do with my Q? My AoE Q? It could be that. Okay, nice. That AOE actually is really nice for Wave Clear, goddamn. Makes it really easy to stack our Q now as well. I need to be aiming for lost hits on our Q in this lane. Uh, in any lane. That This is just how you scale a smolder. Nice one. Cool. We're just going to set up those minions with one Q, and then the second Q here is going to set them up for the last hit. Perfect. Should I use my ult here? I, I will be honest, I have not read the tooltip of my ultimate yet, but let's do it. I really don't think I even needed the ghost here, to be fair. That's fine. I probably should have lost it with my Q as well, just to get some stacks out of that, because you can either lost hit minions for uh, stacks on your passive, or you can just damage champions with your abilities. So if you can kill a champion with either an auto or an ability, uh, obviously mana is a consideration, and I am lacking that, so maybe in hindsight, maybe I did actually make the right call there, but I would say it probably was actually just going to be smarter to, um, uh, to uh, lost hitter with my Q. I'm just going to base here over prioritizing this plating. Already afford this. Can already afford essence reverse. So, super scorcher breath. Ooh, nice. It's considered a basic attack and applies on hit effects. His ability can only damage one time per cast. Yeah. So he scales really well with crit, or decently with crit anyway. He's got specific ceilings in his crit to force, or in his kit to force him to build crit. Um, didn't work out so well for Zarya at one point until they made a bunch of changes to her, but probably, you know, we, we, we'll assume for now that he is actually locked into building crit. So we're going to want to build it into Navori after that because he's clearly just like a spellcaster type. 
Yeah, okay, so I, I, you know what? That is not a fluke on the fleet. Did you see how fast I stacked that? Like, no other champion can do this. What? I don't know how I'm stacking it that fast. I guess, um... So his Q applies life still at a, per at, a, at, a, at a reduced percentage. Sorry, I can't remember exactly what it was. Oop. That was okay damage. I can't remember exactly what it was. I think it was... Was it 75%? Was it 50%? But clearly the, it works that way because apparently he just gets absurd healing from minions. Would have thunk. I'm not noticing it now, but I can clearly see my, like... Fleet just... The, or sorry, my overheal just stacking up so fast whenever I queue a mini wave of full HP. Yeah, I mean, sorry to back up. It probably wouldn't actually be a thing. Ooh. I don't know if that kills her. Looks like no. I'm gonna drag him to the cannon, where I can start killing the cannon at the same time as him. Because I think I'm gonna die no matter what. Either that or I killed one and uh, killed him and won the fight. We'll see. Oh! I'm not used to that duration, but I think I got him. Oh, holy crap. Okay, that was really lucky. Can I get the plating as well? There's Jerry on top. Love it. Uh, Jinx will almost certainly have ult, I'm sure. Hurlt is on a very low cooldown. I think it's on like a 75 cooldown these days. So I'm trying to keep an eye on her. She's potentially going to look all the way to my turret to try and find me here. Well, based on a really unpredictable spot. She would expect me to be made with base. Somewhere in the lane here. Maybe here. Maybe here. Maybe here. Not here. I doubt she's going to throw a random ult anyway. I think she was looking for my base to see if she could find me and then throw a hold to me. But if she can't, she's not going to do it. But, you know, just in case. Okay, so my E only lasts, like, what, one second? 1 1.25 seconds. Does it increase when I level up my E? No, it does not. Okay. Uh, the cooldown does go down, though, which could be good. An enemy has been slain. Text the lowest health enemy. Okay, that is very convenient. Uh, we could try and make a play on Jinx here. I don't know where Zillion is. Oh, Zillion is most definitely AFK, which I probably should have noticed ages ago, but... Okay, you know what? I take it back. I I am obviously a little bit fed here. His early game is not as bad as I thought. Which, I, to be fair, it actually does make sense. I was going to say, um, also, according to Lollalytics, his win rate uh, over time graph is like high early game, then drops down to shit up mid game, then drops really, or sorry, increases really high again in the late game. So actually, it, it could be that he actually does have a good lane phase, then just is useless mid game. To be fair, I didn't really have any thoughts on his early game when I watched videos on him. It was mainly his mid game that I thought, huh, this is pretty bad. Doesn't feel like it's going to be that bad with the damage I'm doing right now, though. Maybe I'll, I'll probably be really weak against Zach, to be fair. I'm not doing that much DPS, but my burst is okay. Like, I can easily 1v1 someone like Jinx. Uh, to be fair, she is insanely ridiculously behind. That's a shame about the Zillion. Oh, yeah, there's the expected surrender. We'll try and get a, another game in then. Alright, gamers, we are back for another game of Smolder. This game playing Smolder Silas into... I don't know. Is that Gragas ADC? Or that Solid C? I don't know. It seems like it's going to be Gragas. Weird. I'm playing Draft this time, not Quick Play, because that previous game was horrible, but... Doesn't look like it's making the bot lane picks any more conventional. Would we'll play ranked, but he's definitely going to be a perma bent there. Alright, anyway, I definitely have figured out the interaction between um, Smolder and Lifestyle anyway, why he seems to work so well with Overheal. is because once you unlock the AoE Q at um, 25 stacks... <coughs> Then at that point, it just, he synergizes really crazy well with lifesteal. Since, basically, if he's hitting, like, three different things, then he's getting 200% efficiency on healing on his Q. 300%? No, I think it's actually 150%. But it gets better and better as he keeps unlocking uh, more bolts for his Q AoE. And eventually his Q starts to deal a lot more damage than auto attacks do, so you can just heal for a lot on a minion wave with just one Q. Which is why you seem to just stack up over heal so crazy fast. I'm gonna level E here. Well, they're bolting us really obnoxious perma slows on their poke. Oh. 
I don't think I got a Q stack for that, unfortunately. Well, the Bolin is obnoxious for somebody, definitely, who just wants to farm up. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to go up that cannon sadly. There's just no way that I can walk up and loss at that. <coughs> with any luck, maybe Salas can get it with his Q. Oh, actually. We're fine. We don't want to fight here, though. I don't even have Q. Plus, we're losing vision there. Plus, we're inside of their massive wave. It generally, it was not a good time to fight, but at least he bought me. Time to get the cannon. Oh, my God. Yeah, I didn't think that would last hit, but that was really close, though. Oh, wow, that W does a lot of damage to minions, actually. What the hell? Anyway, a lot of you are going to be asking, or thinking, shouldn't Mana Moon be good on this guy? Because basically, his playstyle and builds are like probably very similar to Ezreal, except that he skills a little bit better with crit. So the fact that he skills better with crit is already one reason to not build Mana Moon, since... Um, Mana Moon doesn't give crit. But does that mean it's bad? Well, probably not. Uh, according to stats at the moment, hang on. Okay. Nice. According to stats at the moment, uh, he is fine with the Mana Moon. He is fine. It's not the best choice necessarily for him. It's not a bad choice. It's fine. Oh, I think Lux could have flashed, right? Maybe I get this guy. Maybe I'm being ambitious. Oh, I think I got him. I do die, unfortunately, though. Didn't account for getting ignited. Oh well. Or would I have died without that? Who knows? I'm gonna check in a sec, actually. Or try to. <coughs> Let's see. So when I flashed in, I had 464 HP. Oh, so without second turret shot, uh, I had 281 HP. 259 damage. Yeah, I only died because of Ignite. <laughs> That's unfortunate. But yeah, this time we're actually running the Fleet Footwork and Biscuit Delivery, as I said, would probably be best. So we can just focus on getting our core items. I think that's going to be pretty important on Smolder. He should spike really hard on Essence Weaver. And with Adams in general, obviously, as a hyper carry. I actually just want the last hit there, but he would just not get out of the way of my... Q click, so I guess I'll just harass him instead. <coughs> okay, well, if lost sitting uh, with my cannon is. Uh, sorry, with my W is actually so effective, I can just try and save my W for lost sitting cannons. Or. Oh no, it died. Okay, so I can Q while I'm mid E. That's good to know. Using E does not lock me out of my Q, but I think my Q might actually cancel my E, is one thing to note. Oh, we're getting ganked. Oh my god, thank god he went for Silas. He got baited by the low HP guy. Come on. Come on. That should have surely gone on Lux. What? I was surely in range. Oh well. But yeah, if Nocturne had just focused on flanking me there, I think I might have died. I didn't have my E up at the time. I don't think so. I couldn't have hit in the wall. Okay, we're at 25 stacks. What the hell? I've had that for a while. How did I notice? Good though. We keep harassing with abilities whenever we can, even if it doesn't seem important, even if you're like, ah, but I'm not going for a kill anyway. Uh, it does, you know, every time you hit a champion with an ability, it does give you stacks on your passive. So it is actually a big deal to just look for some poke whenever you can, particularly with your W, because your W loss setting doesn't actually give you stacks. Whereas your Q loss setting does give you stacks. So ideally, you loss, or you poke with W a lot, and you loss it with Q. <coughs> But obviously, if you can poke with Q, I mean, you can do that as well. It's probably fine. You should, probably should. It's just that it won't, um... Uh, it, it's short of range, so it's, like, not as convenient to poke with anyway. And you can just be using it to loss at minions anyway. 
So I think one thing I forgot to mention in the previous game as well is I was actually not running the attack speed chart. I'm running flat AD. Uh, looking at stats so far, it seems likely that that's probably going to be a little bit better. Not a, not a ton better, but definitely a little bit better, I think. Makes sense to me because of how little I seem to really be auto-attacking on Smolder. Unlike Ezreal, who actually has a lot of incentive to auto-attack because of his passive, uh, you're mainly just... Like, your auto-attacks don't really do anything compared to your Q, so... Doesn't feel worth to try and itemize around them. And we're also going to be definitely doing Ionians instead of Berserkers. And then one other thing that's interesting. Hang on. Oh, here comes Noctin again. We'll provide some covering fire here. Alright, we're fine. Smoldery kind of works in a way like Kaisa E, where it's sort of it's sort of like an escape of dash, but it's like you control which direction it goes in. Like, that's the way I basically think of Kaisa E, and this works fairly similar, except the auto attacks at the same time. This guy might try to make a play on me with his ult, so. Be careful. <coughs> Probably gets away here. I won't try too hard to try and follow up here. Ooh. That reaches, right? Yeah. I need one auto. There we go. Right. Yeah, and I've been laning for how long? And I've been getting harassed for a while. But look at my HP. I'm overhealed. Definitely seeing why that has such a good win rate. That's definitely not a fluke now. I know. Oh, I've tried to line up these minions to all die to my Q, but Salus is messing it up. Can't blame him, obviously. It's, it's a new champion, and... Something I'm, I'm th as the smaller player, I'm definitely gonna think about more than his support would. <laughs> Alright, we got Essence Reaver. Yeah, sorry, I was in the middle of saying something. Um, another thing that uh, I think might be promising, uh, definitely stats look promising for it so far, and the logic actually, like, makes perfect sense to me, is in even instead of Adaptive Force in this first slot here, uh, it could be that it's actually optimal to do Ability Haste. I wanted to k keep on with the... Uh, adaptive Force for this game, but ability, ha ability Haste right now, with not too much sample size to be fair, actually has the highest win rate of the three, and it does make sense to me, because unlike Ezreal, who also scales crazy well with Ability Haste, uh, like I said, um, Smolder's auto attacks are just less useful than Ezreal's auto attacks, so he's probably more reliant on Q than Ezreal is on his Q, which means he cares even more about Ability Haste. Alright, that's good enough. Nice one. Yeah, so not only does he rely more on his Q than Israel relies, what, or not only, it's not really about how much they rely on Q, it's more about how little uh, Smolder relies on auto attacks compared to how Ezreal relies on auto attacks. And then another factor is obviously, uh, Smolder is a stacking champion, you want higher, uh, like the, basically the more your cool, the lower your cooldowns, I should say, um, the more you can actually stack. So, that is something that doesn't really factor in for Ezreal. But it's very similar to the logic of champions like Nasus and Vagar, or like the, the only two champions I can think of in the game who actually do want to run the ability haste thing because it helps them stack. And Smolder has the exact same logic going on there. Oh, come on. No, ho ho. Sad. I need to try and pay attention to my lifestyle at some point. I want to see the exact amount that I'm healing because I, when I build like Doran's Blade and Cole, and I have some. Hang on. <laughs> nice. When I build like on any other champion, I build. Um, please don't steal my stacks. I build uh, like Doran's Blade and Cole, and I have a few Bloodline stacks. I noticed the breakpoint of healing like 9 HP per auto as being like pretty decent, a pretty decent amount of sustain for somebody who has not actually built a dedicated sustain item, you know, like Ramp Scepter. Uh, and in practice tool earlier, when I was checking it briefly, a very low stack smolder with no items at all was already healing like uh, 9 HP per Q, so long as it was hitting like 3 minions. So I was like, wow, that is actually really strong healing for early on, so I want to see how strong it actually gets. Alright, we'll build this, prioritize it. Usually in this build path, no matter what champion I'm playing, 
I would actually do pickaxe into longsword, but because Smolder actually does care so much about ability haste, we're actually going to prioritize the uh, call, call fields over the 10 AD. So we can get some ability haste. Okay, sadly he's going to escape. Yeah, mana is not really a concern for Smolder. I think once you... Ooh, hello. I got him. Oh, that oh that was his Q. I thought it was his ult. But he was about to disengage. <clears throat> I gotta say though, the fact that every single support in the game now can loss at minions is so inconvenient for Smolder's early stacking. I get so salty every time a support that just lost its minion. It's like, yeah, I'm getting the gold, but what about my stacks, man? This wouldn't be for us. That would be such a random time to do it. Yeah, that did not quite reach. We'll hit the turret once with Mass and Reaver. Lightning doesn't go down this time. Oh, actually it does, and the good thing that it does because... Nice one. Ooh, nice try. Okay, I need to try and pay attention to my lifestyle here. Wow, I just gained like 30 HP just from one Q, what the hell? And obviously our Q, it's not as spammable as an auto attack, but it is really spammable. So that is not ceiling. You can see why it's only at 50% effectiveness, I guess. Even that is crazy strong. Maybe I could have eat onto him and just queued him there. the hell? Got him, barely. The one has to shoot with proc. Uh, nice. <laughs> I was worried about that timing. Okay, uh, so Nocturne shouldn't have his ult up as far as I know. Ah, damn. Oh, dude, uh, actually I've got no worry. Nice. This works out nicely. Sorry if I sound sick, by the way. That is because I am indeed sick. I can just use the outer base every time. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, I suppose there are some walls you could actually go through. That makes it slightly more efficient to get into lane faster. Probably wouldn't want to... Well, not always would you want to like delay your E too long when leaving base, though. Because you might need it when you get into lane. <coughs> the sooner you do it on the way to lane, the better. So it's available when you need it. I can use my E to get into this fight faster, though. Uh, I'm assuming this knocked out isn't for me. It's annoying that it's removing vision, though. Oh, nice. Okay, nice. Wow, we're getting... Wow, a lot of wave clear now. What the hell? Okay, we hit the next breakpoint then. 125 stacks. Sends three explosions beyond the target. That deal 75% of this ability's damage. So, actually... Uh, I kind of had those mixed up. I, actually, I kind of assumed the 25 stacks one was that. And I don't really know what I thought the 125 stacks one was. But apparently, um, I guess it does, the 25 stacks one, actually, the AoE does equal damage to all targets. Whereas this one does 75% to the ones in the back. So there's like two different forms of AoE upgrades, apparently, as it, as it turns out. Hello? What the hell? Okay. Well, that was nice. And you can see the more, the lower our ability haste, I should say, the, f the just m more smooth it is to just lost hit only with Q. So the more stacks you get. That is why we also probably will want to run the ability haste shard. Oof. Ooh, nice one. Malphite is still gonna have ult as far as I know, unless he used it on some other lane. Whoa. A pop ghost. Come on. 
definitely gonna try and turn. No, he's not. What the hell? Fuck it. I'll flash just to kill him. <clears throat> yeah, suddenly our stacks, though, are like <laughs> ramping up massively. Your ability stack just becomes so much faster. Very much like Nessus and Vagar. Not just, in this case, though, it's not just because of your cooldowns, but also just the massive AoE. This isn't really comparable to Nessus and Vagar. It's similar, but like to a way more extreme degree. This ability does 140% damage to minions and monsters. He had missed that in the tooltip, actually. But anyway, so, okay, so our options for third item. Bloodthirster. Or Lord Dominic's if you need it, right? But otherwise, Bloodthirster or Fire Cannon. Those seem to be by far the best performing third items for Smolder. Uh, uh, they both have really good synergy, right? Because Smolder's Q, it, it's said that it's treated as a basic attack. In some ways it is, in some ways it isn't. But for Fire Cannon at least, it is actually treated as a basic attack. So you can increase the Q range with Fire Cannon. How handy is that? So that's going to make for a really good poke. But at the same time, we have seen how much synergy Smolder has with Lifesteal. So Bloodthirster also sounds absolutely nuts and does perform quite well on him as well. So I'm going to start off trying that out. And I assume, but I assume really what's going to happen is like they're both like pretty much equally viable. And so it doesn't really matter which one you build so long as you're building one of them anyway. Now one thing actually... I need to investigate is Runans on Smolder. I had somebody suggest it, and at the time it didn't make sense to me, but then I was like, no, wait, but it actually, it says that it's treated as a basic attack, and Runans affects basic attacks. So how does Runans affect Smolder Q? I actually also should probably look at that one, right? I don't think I noticed anybody building it, or many people building it, but there's probably some data there. <clears throat> oh man, this old range is massive. Don't think I need to use it here, though. Nice one. Let me just look at the data for Runens then real quick. Sorry, bro, I need to stack. <laughs> wait, dude, wait, that was actually so greedy of him, though, actually. When you think about it, he could have done golems and then red buff, and he would have given a global red buff to everybody. <laughs> he farmed it, like, 10 seconds soon for no reason, and meant that he only gave red buff to me. Also, Nocturne, you're not in a good place, buddy. I've done so much damage to him just with the splash damage, by the way. What the hell? Let's try the ult. Dead. That is a lot of damage. Not a crazy amount of damage, but a lot of damage. Please. I, I Honestly, like, it, it always somewhat bothers me when junglers farm in a lane like this. Not even just in terms of denying farm for me, but if, like, our mid laner or some other carry is on the lane then i'm like ah, just leave the lane to your J just leave the farm to your laners man but as smolder is like especially triggering me because of how many q stacks i could be getting this actually just does feel like one of the strongest champions in the game to benefit from farm no, obviously not just because of the gold itself but because of the fact that all farm is like opportunities to stack and unlike Vagar with, you know, trying to loss hit fucking six minions in a wave with Q, which takes forever, this is very fast. There's no excuse at all to not be letting Smolder farm like entire minion waves with his Q. <coughs> uh, I could do with farming one more wave and basing, really. Please. <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, so there's two down on the enemy team, two down on my team, but this is going to be super easy to farm in theory, right? Nice. I actually applied my Essence River onto... I should leave here, actually, not going to spawn in soon. I'll just get the Skoda Crown in base, I think. Um, one trick to just proc Essence River on a single auto like that uh, is you just auto-attack, and then mid-auto-attack, you press W. Since otherwise, you, you can't use Q on turrets, unfortunately. Like, I, I, that's why I say it's treated as a basic attack. Sort of. I mean, Zeri Q is treated as a basic attack in many ways, and you can actually use it on turrets. This is considered a basic attack, but you can't use it on turrets. The, the, the logic is not, like, 100% consistent with what an auto attack is. So, unfortunately, you can't push turrets super fast with Smolder. Which means that if you want to use your Essence Super proc on a turret, ideally you just press W mid auto. No, oh, I didn't mean to stop here. Oh man, but Raptors are such a good source of farm as well. What the hell? Oh, hello! Oh, so I was distracted. <laughs> yeah, 
nuts. Oh, I am also vaguely interested. I don't think his E is treated as a smolder, as a as an auto attack, right? I want to test that by just using Essence Reaver, or t seeing if Essence Reaver procs on a minion here. It doesn't. Okay, good to know. Didn't think so, but we just wanted to be sure. Honestly, so I I, th I think this is actually going to be one of my favorite ADCs. I love stacking mechanics, honestly. There is an alternate timeline where before a dark could have just been a Nasus main back in the day. I just love stacking. I just combining my two different things. Maybe I got a Relentless Soul here. Oh my god, my damage. Is that all me? I think so. Jesus. Alright, I want to find something to lifesteal off of so we can show off just how crazy the lifestealing is. I don't think the AoE, uh, sorry, the... um. Explosions beyond the target thing, the 125 stacks thing. I don't think that applies lifesteal, or does it? I don't actually know. That's a lot of healing, though. I think it does, actually. I did see some plenty delayed healing there. <clears throat> Ideally, I wouldn't base until far cannon. So, so, Essence River just means that mana is like never going to be a concern. And Bloodthirster also takes care of... Uh, Heal like HP ever also being a concern, so I can literally just stay as long as I want until I like I could base for zeal, which would be an okay pro spike, but I don't think it's worth delaying farming for for, for my fire cutter, which is the real pro spike. Doesn't help that of course I as I've mentioned I don't care too much for attack speed, so that's off the value of fire or of, of zeal rather gone, which is also I guess an issue with uh, Runance. I meant to check Runance before, by the way. Let me check now. Wow, nobody's building this. There's, like, actually no data on that. They exist. What little data there is, though, would indicate that it's bad, but I can't really... Uh, take that at face value with the little data that's present. I do imagine that it's probably just not going to be as good, though, is my guess. Oh my god, I'm actually watching it lives now. Nice one. Okay, so I was completely wrong. I do think that Smolder Skill is like fucking crazy. I thought he might have been a little bit undertuned and they would have to buff him in some ways. But no, actually, he, even if he... Maybe he turns out to be a little bit undertuned. You know, I am a player. I haven't checked these guys' ranks, but I'm assuming they're much lower ranked than me. But still, like, I can just tell, like... This is plenty strong. Especially scaling-wise. <clears throat> Alright, I've actually got enough gold for my Farcana now. I'm gonna base for that. I love the fact that we're actually going to reach this item, because I've got to show off his crazy synergy with Lifesteal, and now I want to show off his crazy synergy with Fire Cannon. At least I would assume so, anyway. I would assume he has that. <coughs> Can I make it through both of these walls? No. Yeah, it's a very short duration, unfortunately. It's pretty ambitious to think you can make it through two walls, but you can make it through at least one of any wall. Of almost any wall, just by getting to the uh, second half of the wall. That will just phase you on the other side. We could also go for Raptors here, it is straight up optimal. Compared to leaving it up for my jungler, who may not ever get it, considering how much value I get out of these. Alright, so that's the 13 second cooldown on my E. How fast do I get it down? Somewhat fast, not crazy fast, but it's okay. Uh, I also want to know whether the burn of my Q actually counts as killing with my Q. I would I would assume it probably does. That would be consistent with the explosions also working, I think. Let's see if I can test it on blue buff. Uh, it should really help my team soon, though. But we currently have TF dead, so we shouldn't exactly be fighting anyway. Ah, I can't really test it too easily. Maybe on a minion. <coughs> My team shouldn't have been fighting there anyway. Ah, damn. Okay, I'm probably gonna have to have a think about what is like the optimal angle to approach some mini waves to one shot them all with my Q, because that was inefficient as hell. Oh well. That's some dead. That was literally because of Farkonnen. I would not have reached him without Farkonnen. God damn. I was thinking he was getting away, then my Q suddenly was casting. Oh, my bad. I could finish her with ult. Does this kill a Relance Elephant Lance? Oh, it didn't land anyway. My bad. 
Oh my word. But I can just, like, almost one-shot Gragas too. What the hell? Is he dead? Oh, I just sneaked an auto attack into him. Nice. Holy crap, man. That is so good. I'm curious, though, how much of my damage this game has been Q and how much of his has been auto attacks. Because I feel like Smolder, this is very little reason to auto. Like, or it's not very little reason, but, like, it's situational. Like, obviously, I've got, like, 343 AD. I can add a lot of DPS by integrating auto attacks. I've just really found an opportunity. You know, like, I've basically been one-shotting people or poking them. And I prioritize poking with Q over poking with autos, obviously. And with minion waves, I'm not auto attacking them because I want to loss it with my Q. Oh, this is gonna be a good test, I think. Oh, it didn't burn. Okay, my bad. Uh, I guess I should base. I can base for Lord Dominic's. Here we go, and we can also get Elixir of Wrath. Alright, full build. 28 minutes. A lot of that is just from farm. That's just so easy to farm a small There's Like, probably... I, would, I was gonna say up there with, like, Jinx and Zion and Sivir, but he might actually be better than all those. At least maybe tied with Sivir for wave player. But anyway, uh... Didn't really get to show off the Lord Dominix, but, you know, it's just standard ADC synergy with Lord Dominix. Just, you know, the normal amplification. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And that you found it helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video.